Okay, out in PI, brought to you by Digikey Native Fruit. This week, Lady Ada, what is it? It's Sciosense. Sciosense makes sensors, and this is the first time we featured them, which is pretty exciting. So let's get right to it. This is the ENS-160. The ENS-160 is Environment Sensor. I think that's what the ENS stands for. And it's their latest model. Um, this is not the first time they've done a gas sensor. Um, these are the specs for this one. It's a multi-gas sensor. Um, it's got I squared C SPI. We'll go into all this and it gives you uh, air quality, TVOC, and effective CO2 output. Um, you might be like, hey, CyroSense, didn't they make that other sensor, the CCS 811 and the 801? Yes, they did. Um, this is a very popular air quality sensor slash gas sensor. I think this was actually one of the first um, like all-in-one embedded I squared C mock sensors. Um, and we carried it for a very long time, but uh, as of a few months ago, it's been obsolete and discontinued. So you can't get the CCS 811 um, because the, as you see here, the ENS 160 is considered um, the uh, next generation. So this is what you would um, upgrade to. So traditional mock sensors um, used to look something like this. It's actually from a guide um, that we have on Learn. So on the top left, actually the bottom left is kind of this orange tubular sensor. And a lot of people who've used gas sensors, MOX sensors, um, they've looked something like this. There's four pins and they're in a container and then you like breathe or have uh, air flow through that top mesh. And inside is the gas sensor. The above the little um, metal rectangular version with all the dots is, is a miniaturized version that doesn't, it doesn't have as big of a container, but it's the same idea, which is um, you have a heater and uh, the heater heats up the um, MOX sensor, which is a doped silicon chunk. And the silicon is doped in a way that when um, organic volatile compounds like ethanol or methane get near it or blow by it, the resistance changes. Um, so this is what you know a lot of uh, MOX sensors look like. Um, and for these, you'll notice there is um, a, a transistor and next to it is actually there's a resistor nearby and the resistor is used to control the heating element so on these mox sensors you'd actually have my controller um control i think like the end pin is is what's connected on this breakout you turn on the heater you wait a while you do the reading and you turn the heater off um and this is a little clumsy because you need an analog digital input and you need a lot of power and you need to control the heater and like manage the heater because you don't want it on all the time or you could like damage the sensor um, so this is a this is a diagram of the ccs 801 this is like the original um mox sensor from um uh, sciosense and you can see they've got um integrated is the heating resistor rh and the volatile organic compound sensing resistor RS. Um, and then what they've done is they've merged these two elements with the external control, which is a heating controller and then an analog digital input converter and then a calculator. And that's actually kind of the magic because in the ENS 160, you've got four, uh, it's a really cool like rendering. You've got four elements uh, you can see in the explosion diagram to the right. Um, each one of them has a separate heater and each one of them is slightly doped differently. Um, and by taking the four readings and they perform whatever calculation, they can get a better sense of the effective CO2 and the total volatile organic compounds. Um, so this is the ENS-160. It has I squared C and SPI interfaces. Um, and you know, you don't have to like, you can you know, manually control the heater and get the raw resistance readings. But in general, what you do is you just say, hey, turn on and give me like the effect of CO2 in the TVOC, and it does all that work for you. Um, and it even handles the baseline calculations, which is something that if you were manually controlling the MOX sensor, you would have to do by hand. Um, so this is how you connect it up. The only thing to watch for is it does require a 1.8 volt um, power supply. So you can use a VDIO of 3.3 volts, but you do have to supply at 1.8 volts for the power, um, which makes sense because it has this heating element that you know you don't want to have a high voltage, um, or you have a significant amount of current you're going to need. 
the three outputs that you're going to get from the sensor, you can get the raw resistance readings, but um, in general, what people want to get is the TVOC or the effective CO2 or what they call the AQI reading, which is just a, a generic air quality reading from one to five that tells you like how good is the air, what one is the best and five is, you know, open a window. Um, and um, what's nice about these readings is again, you don't need a binary blob. You don't need to do the computation on your own. It just sort of like pops out of the sensor automatically. Um, one thing to note is, you know, cause we've covered CO2 sensors before on INMPI is this is a eCO2 sensor, which means effective CO2. It's not a true NDIR sensor, and they do compare in the data sheet. You know, here's NDIR outputs versus um, this sensor and the effective CO2 output. In their opinion, because you get volatile organic compound readings as well as effective CO2, it's better at measuring like air quality, but it wouldn't be what you would use if you're actually trying to measure just CO2. So if you're if you're like trying to measure CO2 for um, outdoor environmental tracking and you're not, you don't care about like air quality for humans as much as like you're maybe doing it for plants or you're doing it for industrial purposes, this sensor is not going to give you like true CO2. But for, you know, here, you know, bathrooms, bedrooms, kitchens, offices, it's going to do a really good job. And, you know, they did compare for most purposes um, indoors for humans. The effect of CO2 is pretty much the same as the NDIR CO2. Again, it's not if you're not dealing with just humans and indoor office spaces or homes, um, but it's going to be a lot cheaper and use less power than an NDIR sensor. Much, much cheaper. Um, another thing to note is uh, MOX sensors, mock sensors, even though this one has four elements, they don't sense individual gases. So you can't, for example, ask it, hey, how much ethanol versus methane versus toluene are you measuring? It's going to give you like the sum of all of them and um, have different effective reactions to them. But you're not going to be able to tell if you have mostly methane or mostly toluene. It's going to tell you total volatile organic compounds. Um, one nice thing that they've added to the ENS160 is now you can do temperature and humidity compensation because that resistor uh, that doped silicon resistor that measures um, the effect of CO2 in volatile organic compound, that is going to be affected by humidity and temperature. Like the higher the humidity, um, the higher that resistance, and it's reacting to the humidity, not to the organic compounds. And so, you know, this is something that um, you'll notice, especially with uh, like alcohol, ethanol sensors. If you're breathing into it, your breath is just humid enough that it could set off the sensor even if you not necessarily, don't necessarily have ethanol in your breath. So um, humidity and temperature compensation is important. And you would need a separate temperature and humidity sensor. Um, SioSense makes one that they suggest, but honestly, any humidity and temperature sensor will do a fair job. And they've got code as well. So on their GitHub, there is the uh, SioSense ENS160 Arduino driver. It's got... Um, Examples and code for I squared C. Uh, also, I haven't used this sensor with SPI. Don't know if it actually works with SPI, um, but it definitely works very well with I squared C. And if you want to get started quickly, we've got a breakout board, um, part number 5606, which is available at DigiKey. They've even got 150-ish in stock right now. It comes with a regulator and level shifting, so you can only uh, you can get away with just providing it with three to five volts. You don't need to do the one point eight volt level shifting or regulation. Okay, and then uh, and they're in stock. They're in stock. Hundreds of them, almost a thousand. Looks like I bought five uh, from their initial stocking that they've got. The NS one hundred and sixty in stock right now. Um, it is surface mount. They also have an eval board, but you know, honestly, I'm I'm going to promote the Adafruit breakout because it's in stock at Adafruit at uh, DigiKey right now. All right, and they have a video. So we're going to play the video. That's right. Let's see the video. We feel it on our skin, in our lungs. It's always there. And we need it, the air that surrounds us. But it can be dangerous because humans and their innovations create pollution which degrades air quality. The problem of air pollution caused by both outdoor and indoor sources is far from being solved. It represents the single largest environmental risk to health globally. 
Air pollution causes 4.5 million premature deaths each year. Some air pollutants are two to five times more likely to be found indoors than outdoors. They come from various sources, including furniture, cleaning products, cosmetics, paint, and human respiration. The World Health Organization advises that prolonged exposure to volatile organic compounds, so-called VOCs, can cause severe health risks. Also, poor ventilation in confined spaces is associated with increased risk of infection with airborne viruses. We cannot see these dangers suspended in the air, but our sensors make the invisible visible. SioSense designed an innovative technology to ensure the air we breathe indoors is fresh, safe and clean. Our sensors detect hazardous VOCs and unpleasant odors. They track air quality and humidity levels in indoor air to guarantee health, safety and comfort. SioSense environmental sensors combine perfectly with any ventilation, purification or air conditioning system. Together, they make sure that fresh air can replace polluted or stale air. A perfect marriage of nature and science. Sensor technology which restores the air you breathe to the way nature made it. SioSense. Sensing tomorrow's world. Hi on MPR.